All right, Shalom. Shalom. I'd like to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhana, Nash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sister Akio for pushing this word out across the four corners of the world. Just another gym, man, transit lesson. All through the spirit, the power, and the vibration of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. With me, I have the brother. Lamar, are we up? Yeah, so we just go into a lesson through the spirit about the mission at hand. When you go to the word mission, it goes to like a special assignment, like your true intention or purpose. Because within this earthly realm, in this modern day of time, you have a lot of jake within that mental sphere realm. They always talking about your purpose. But all the purpose that they are requiring or talking about to their audience, it all leads back into the American dream, which is a system that I will power you. How about Shima Shah is going to break down very soon. So it's got to be a, a certain type of mission, more so a spiritual mission, that we are trying to, you know, head on the road to. Because at the end of the day, we're nothing but pilgrims. And that goes to like that person that's traveling to that holy place. And that holy place at the end of the day is ultimately the kingdom of heaven, you know. So I start off with uh, Ephesians 4 and 1. It says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation but with your call. And that vocation goes into that Greek word klesis, which goes into like your calling, your invitation. It also goes into your divine invitation to embrace the salvation of the Most High. So this is our spiritual call of duty by us going out there on the highways and byways as our reasonable service, but being good stewards within this ministry, you know? All right, this is the book of First Corinthians chapter nine, starting in verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And when you run the race, the mission is to finish, man. You know, and you you may not come in a particular first place, second place, third place, but at the end of the day, you don't lose unless you quit. So you can't quit running the race, and you gotta stay focused on the finish line, man, because that's where you're going to receive that prize, whether it's the gold medal, the bronze medal, or the silver medal, you know, but in this truth, we're going to receive those palms, those, that crown that we're going to personally get from Yahweh Shai. That's the mission. That's 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 our focal, is to finish the race. What did uh, uh, Paul say? How he had finished his course? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't stop. You know, he could continued on to, he was done with his mission and he had reached the finish line. That's right. You know, and that's where we got to be at. I got you, uh, this Philippians 3 and 14. It says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai. So he pressed toward the mark, meaning that he had his eye single. He had his eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. That's how we have to be through the spirit, man. All the different obstacles, the adversities, the trials, tribulations, you know, the different sources of hell that we have to go through. We always got to keep our mindset on the outcome, which is the kingdom of heaven. Because at the end of the day, we know through the spirit that things that we're going through, hence the biblical curses for the Israelites, this is not a forever thing. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a comfort right here through the scriptures. How Yahweh Shah told his disciples, hey, my burden is light. Apostle Paul was going into about our light affliction. It's both for a moment. So all these things that we're going through, through the spirit as a body, it's all temporary, you know? So you compare the temporary according to, uh, you know, something that's gonna be eternal. It holds no weight. This is back in 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. And every man that striving for the mastery is temporary in all things. Now they do it to obtain the corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Right. We do this to obtain an incorruptible crown because we always go into it and relating it to athletes, Michael Jordan, you know, Kobe. Them guys, you know what I'm saying, they, they pushed and they pushed to obtain what? Championships, yeah. you know, uh, uh, great status when it's come to being the greatest basketball players. But that's all corruptible shit. Yep. It's all vanity. When the Lord comes back and destroys this place, that shit is not gonna be remembered. That's right. You know? So, but the, the objective, the mindset is pretty much the same. Yeah. Push to get or to obtain 
a, a everlasting crown, to obtain incorruptible crown. That's right. Okay, to obtain salvation, something that's as far as the Israelites, man, we're gonna have eternity, man, eternal life. Everything is gonna be forever. Nothing's gonna be corruptible. Nothing is gonna be tainted. You know, everything is gonna be forever. Yep. And that's the that's again the focal. Thinking about the finish line. Right. Thinking about finishing the race. Thinking about receiving those poems, okay? Thinking about the fact that we're gonna inherit the kingdom under your house shot. That's right. Like everything's gonna be in pure vibration, man. Right. You know? So things you're not getting on this side, you know, you might not have the job you want, you might not be making the money you want, you may not have the woman you want. You might not be getting a lot of things you see other people have, but you still gotta focus on the mission at hand because if you start dwelling on what people, other people are doing and what they got, you know, that 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 demon of covetousness could overtake you, man. So you have to have, like the brother said, that, that in a sense, that tunnel vision and focused on the kingdom, man. And when you're focused and paying attention and thinking about your uh, what you're trying to obtain, it gives you that ability to go through the straight gate because you're not looking side to side and you're not wavering you're focused on in, in, in a straight line to obtain you know salvation man. That's, right. that's right this is ecclesiastes 12 and 8 it says vanity of vanities said the preacher all is vanity right and, and vanity is is something that's worthless worthless something that's gonna come to an end something that somebody else may get when you pass on or whatever the case may be, man, but it's not eternal. It's a temporary, temporal thing that you have. And we, we don't we don't want that. You know, use the word not as abuse. It's good to have a nice job, a nice home, you know, things of that nature, but that's not the uh, all in be all. All in be all, come to water. You know, it's just a it's it's a pit stop. We dealing what we got and enjoying what we have, whatever the Lord blesses us with for the time being, but it's not something that we are in dire need to hold on to. Right. You know, we ready to sacrifice it all, man, because we want the kingdom. We'll do away with all this shit. Yep. And the people who we see who have living lavish, have this money and nice cars, a bunch of women, all these things. Well, back in uh, Ephesians 4 and 1 again, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So again, that vocation goes into our true intention, our purpose, you know? And the ultimate goal, like as we said through the video, through the spirit, is the kingdom of heaven. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbear one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And it says right here in verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. So that calling again goes to our spiritual call of duty as being those joint heirs with you. How we shot. That's what it's all about, you know. You got one for you, bro. Okay. This is uh 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, right. which the Lord, Yahweh, the righteous does, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And this is not just no corruptible crown. Like the brothers going to earlier, this is the incorruptible crown, and how you're being crowned by the greatest man ever that walked the planet Earth, Yahweh Shai. You know, so how great a reception that could be through the spirit, you know? Come, come. And, and, and the Paul said he had fought the good fight. He finished his course. He kept the faith. And that's a big part of it, man, because you got to have faith and believe that, as the scriptures say, the Lord's words are faithful and true. So if you believe and have faith in the word of the Lord, you're going to be ready to fight. You're going to take them punches. You're going to take them L's. You're going to go through the fire. You're going to be replenished, man. You know, you're going to allow the Lord to do what he do, man. But you're going to have faith because you know through the afflictions and all that there's a reward. There's a prize. That's right. Okay? So, like, like Apostle Paul said, he fought the good fight. He finished his course. Yep. Meaning what? He obtained 
and finish his mission. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get the reward. He know he is. He's resting, you know. He was going to the fact he pretty much going to be resting. But he knew that he was going to still receive that reward with what? The Lord comes back. Yep. And we're in those times. Yeah, because he knew he was going to be back here again in, in the process called reincarnation, yeah. regeneration. Right. You know? He's fighting for their crown right now fighting still. For crown right now. <laughs> this is the book of Psalm 34 and 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Yahweh by Shiba Shah delivered him out of them all. Our affliction is but for a moment. Okay, and it's a small affliction. So the worst shit you think you're going through is nothing for the Lord to bring you out of. And we're about to go through Jacob's trouble, man, where we truly have to have faith in Yahweh by Shiba Shah. And cause he's the only one gonna be able to deliver us from the hell and havoc and just complete chaos gonna be going on. Yeah. So, so we you gotta keep pushing, keep fighting, and just and what the saying we were saying, and, and, and let your house shine. Yeah, that's it. Just let your house shine, bro. But you gotta have the faith, and you can't stop. You, if you sprain your ankle, hop to the finish line. That's right. You know, but don't give up. Don't stop. Remember. The, the whole thing is finishing the course, finishing the job. So with that, hopefully you all certified, you know, hey, the mission at hand. So Lord, we'd we'll like to give all other glory again too. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ba 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 Hey, double others again to our apostles and elders, great millstones, salutations to our sister Akim. Y'all stay strong, keep pushing forward. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.